So today we're looking at a tool called Lossless Scaling, an app which claims to be able to double or triple your frames per second on any GPU on any game. Now obviously we're looking at it in Microsoft Flight Simulator. You can download the app from Steam. I'll put a link in the video description. For me, it cost £5.89 here in the UK, but obviously you know, your region, the price may vary. So this boost in performance comes from uh, Lossless Scaling's own form of frame generation that it has going on. So if, like me, and you're on an NVIDIA 40 series GPU, chances are you're most likely going to stick with that because I think it's fair to say it's a, it's a really good, solid implementation of frame generation. But we're not all on 40 series GPUs. There's a, a huge amount of people on NVIDIA 20 series, 30 series cards, not to mention AMD cards. So there's only one thing for it. We need to test it out. We're going to test it um, on versus off to see if there are any kind of obvious visual drawbacks or anything like that. Then we're also going to test it alongside NVIDIA's frame generation technology to see if there are any obvious differences there. So let's get right into it. Let's see what it has to offer. OK, we are in our PNDG 777. Um, and yes, uh, my voice does sound weird in case you're wondering. I don't know what's going on. I caught something last week and I thought I was all better. And then a couple of days ago, my voice went weird. So let's start by turning on our frames per second. So we're here at Heathrow. This is the Innybuilds version of Heathrow. And you can see, obviously, we're not on VATSIM or anything like that. So we're maintaining 42, 43 FPS. If we were on VATSIM and we had loads of other planes trundling around with FSLTO running, it'd be a damn sight worse than that. All right, so this is the lossless scaling app. Um, you can see I've set more or less everything here to uh, auto. Um, I've turned off the scaling because I'm not too interested in that right now. What I'm interested in is the frame generation. So we've got um, LSFG, so lossless scaling frame generation 1.1. That's the old version. And now we've got 2.2. So we're going to leave that one on. You can choose whether you want it to double or triple your FPS. Now, I am on a 60 hertz TV. And I think tripling it is probably going to be a bad thing to do because if you think about your base FPS, to triple that to get to 60, your base FPS is going to be around 20 which I don't really want. So I'm, I think it's probably more sensible for me to do a 2x. So hopefully we can kind of be around like the 30s and then it can double it to 60. That'd be quite nice. Um, I'm led to believe that the latest version of this, it will look at what frames your monitor can display. So for example, I'm on a 60 hertz TV and at the moment we're doing 42 FPS. It will only generate 18 more frames to get us to 60 because it knows there's no point generating more frames because my monitor can't show those frames and that could actually help with overall frame pacing and just general stability which is a really nice touch so into 2x we go there is a performance mode if you're on a lower power gpu slightly worse quality but if you're in a pinch consider that as well and there's a load of stuff all down here that i'm just going to leave well alone for now so when you're ready um all you need to do is click scale it gives you five seconds see it counting down i'm going to click back into the sim and hopefully there you go do you see that flash good so that means it's working and also uh, the more observant of you will notice we now have some figures up here in the top left so what it means we've got the number on the left that is our raw fps and you can see that roughly correlates with what we're seeing over here from the built-in frame counter from the sim and then we've got our frames on the right which is what we're getting post lossless scalings frame generation so by the look of it, it's taking our 42 and it's kind of generating what's needed to get us up to 60, which is really nice. So just kind of panning around the outside of the plane, um, I'm just kind of moving us around here with my mouse, just trying to see if there's anything that looks a little bit on the weird side. The only thing I'm noticing is kind of up here on the roof of Terminal 5, you kind of see like those skylights start to look a little bit weird. Now, I don't know if that's just a, a thing with the sim or if that's a loss of the scaling thing. I suppose the thing to do would be to unscale it and see if it still does it. No, it does not. So I think that was a drawback there of lossless scaling, I think. Let's turn it back on. See, it's counting down again, so get back into your app. Give it a second. There we go. Now we're going again. Yeah, you can kind of see it doing it again, can't you? Okay, so that is one visual drawback. Um, not a horrendous one, though, I think it's fair to say. So what we're going to do, I'm going to do a takeoff just so I can get the kind of speed tapes and the altitude tapes moving because I want to see if there's any kind of like weird ghostiness. You know, like when you used to turn on DLSS upscaling, um, often the, the PFD and the ND would be the first thing to look blurry and weird and horrible. So I'm, I'm curious to see if that's going to be the case here. 
Runway looks clean, textures look clean. Now obviously uh, we are falling slightly below 30 FPS so doubling to 60 isn't going to be possible right now. Right, let's get out of here. Thought I just saw a little bit of a flicker there in those trees sort of just over here as we started to rotate. Could be wrong though. But the altitude tapes, the, the numbers, the figures, it all looks reasonably okay. I can't really pick fault. Obviously I'm running in 4K. I'm on a 43 inch TV so I feel like I probably would see it. Let's get gear up. This is pretty damn good and again look, you can see it's just taking our 30 whatever it is and doubling it up to 60. Notice when we go above 30, like here 37, it's uh, still getting us to 60. So it's almost like it's kind of looking at the difference between what our actual frame rate is and 60 and just rendering us those extra frames, which is actually quite nice. Something I always wish that Nvidia's frame generation would do. It's just taking some wing views at the moment, get a look down over London. It's hard to argue with that, isn't it? I mean, obviously YouTube is going to be doing its own compression on, on things and I understand that but sitting here looking at it with my own eyes it's pretty good what if I start panning around I mean, yeah that's it's really hard to argue with that just looking around now looking around the cockpit with my Toby eye tracker I'm not sure it's quite as smooth and buttery as NVIDIA's frame generation but it's not far off and if you don't have a 40 series card and you've got a spare five pound whatever it is to spend on it you know this can take a, an old 20 series 30 series card and really really add to it that's remarkable absolutely remarkable okay so we are back with nvidia's frame generation and you'll notice that we are not being capped at 60 fps with this what it's doing it's taking what the sim gives it as a raw kind of output so the sim is on its own natively generating 35 36 fps and then nvidia's frame generation simply doubles it however that is more than the refresh rate of our monitor so much more than that and we're probably going to start getting some tearing and some not nice visuals um, although being so close to 60 it's not going to be horrendous at the moment. What I'm curious to see is if we hop outside just keeping an eye on that roof of Terminal 5 it does seem a bit nicer doesn't it? What if I change the zoom level? So yeah I think it's fair to say that visual fidelity, visual quality, the points go to Nvidia but again, you've got to keep in mind, this app is only about £5 here in the UK and it kind of adds a massive sought-after feature from the 40 series cards to older cards. So, you know, if it gets you most of the way there for a fiver, that is pretty incredible. So usually how I fly when I'm using NVIDIA's frame generation technology is I will go into the NVIDIA control panel or the NVIDIA app if you're now using that and I will set a max FPS within that. I'll just quickly show you. All right, so this is the NVIDIA app, and if you go to Microsoft Flight Simulator, click Settings, and then if we come all the way down to the bottom, you see there's a setting for maximum frame rate. That's currently off, um, hence the sim is doing whatever it can, so that is literally the maximum it can do at the moment because uh, it's CPU limited, fair enough. Um, if we go into maximum frame rate, turn it on, I cap it to 60, then what will happen is the sim will lock itself to 30 it will then allow frame gen to double it up to 60. Um, so that's a little bit different to how lossless scaling worked because lossless scaling detected uh, that we we're on a 60 hertz display and then just capped it at 60 which i thought was a really nice touch actually um, so however the thing is you notice how the sim hasn't taken it into account yet it's still not really figured it out has it because it's still rendering more than 30 over here and doubling it up to more than 60 over here so I'm going to have to restart the sim, which is really annoying because it takes ages, and I will see you in a minute. Okay, jolly good. So you can see that our 60 FPS limit is now in place. The sim is uh, rendering 30 FPS. It probably could render more, maybe, I don't know, 35, 36, 37. 
Um, and what it's doing, it's capping itself to 30. It kind of hands that off to NVIDIA's frame generation. That then doubles it up to give us 60, um, which when you're on a 60 hertz panel, I think gives you a, a really nice kind of tear-free experience for the most part. So we're going to do a takeoff roll here again at Heathrow. Just keep an eye on those trees there on the horizon because I feel like they got a little bit on the flickery side with lossless scaling. So just keep an eye on that and we will get ourselves moving and do a bit of a, a comparison. Again, just looking at the speed tape there on the takeoff roll. Not seeing a huge amount of difference between what we're seeing here with NVIDIA's frame generation and the lossless scaling. So kind of points there for lossless scaling for doing a good job of it as well. That's good to see. Just keep an eye on those trees there. Keep an eye on those trees just as we rotate. So I feel like they got a little bit weird last time. Yeah, they're looking pretty good, aren't they? Visually. Visually, I think the points have to go to NVIDIA's frame generation, but not by a mile. Not by a mile. And again, if you don't have a 40 series GPU, maybe you're on a 3070, 3080, 2080 Ti, I don't know. Um, and you can kind of throw a fiver at the problem and get most of the way there. That is an incredibly compelling value proposition. Incredibly compelling. I don't know what's going on with my frames per second at the moment, because look, the sim can barely get beyond 25 FPS. Um, which isn't great. And obviously doubling that up, you don't really get that high even once you add in frame generation. Uh, it seems to be a bit happier now though. I guess it's just uh, the sim being the sim, which kind of is why these technologies are always so interesting to us when they come out. Because it's almost like we need all the help we can get. And when we see something like lost the scaling or frame generation or, or whatever, we're always like, oh, maybe this could be the thing that helps us out. So this is all fantastic, but what's unclear to me is how does this work with a variable refresh rate display? I know when I first heard of this app, I kind of recall hearing that it's really, really good, but it kind of does kind of locked frame rates. So it's 60, 120, whatever, whatever the number is, it kind of has to lock itself and it doesn't really play nice with variable refresh rate. So I'm going to switch this over to my Dell 165 Hertz uh, variable refresh rate display. It's a 1440p monitor, so it's not 4K, so it's it's not going to be quite the same as what I've got going on here. Um, and I'll probably have to just point my camera phone, uh, or my smartphone, at the screen and kind of record it. So it's going to be a bit, uh, bit crude, but at least it will give us the data and we'll see what happens next. So bear with me, I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so we are back on my 1440p 165Hz display. I've got uh, lossless scaling running and as you can see over let me show you over here you can see the sim is outputting 45 ish fps and over here you can see lossless scaling is actually dynamically moving up and down so we're kind of around the 90 fps mark so i'm just curious if i start panning around are we going to get any weird like tearing it seems pretty good doesn't it so that does seem to be working with variable refresh rate so obviously i've got it set to 2x at the moment i'm curious what's going to happen if i change it to 3x so let's turn off the scaling let's change this to 3x i'm so sorry about this quality it's the only way i can think of doing it without rearranging my entire setup let's go to scale five four three click back into the sim wait for this to appear Let's get down to here so we can see the numbers. Yeah, look at that. That is nuts. So we're getting roughly 50 FPS out of the sim. And it's doubling it up to beyond 150 FPS. Wow, that feels really buttery. Let me just come out a little bit. Not seeing any obvious signs of tearing. Not to my naked eye anyway. Um... Obviously, looking at a monitor through a smartphone camera is never going to be great to begin with. I'm just looking at this pillar here as I sort of pan across, up and down. To my eye, that looks absolutely bang on. But yeah, for £5 and something, considering what this gives you, I mean, just let's just, uh, just take a moment and look at that number there again. 137 FPS. And I know they're not real frames, I know they're frame generated, but when you start panning around... That feels lovely and buttery. That feels like a high refresh rate experience. Obviously, the camera's not doing not doing it justice because that's running at its own frame rate, but to my naked eye, that feels very good indeed. 
wow what an awesome app I, i'd encourage you to check it out i mean it's not a huge amount of money and what it does give you is actually quite incredible when you consider the amount that you pay for stuff that gives you an awful lot less um this is a this is like crazy bargain territory so yeah super super keen to get your thoughts on this um obviously i'm going to be running it on a 60 hertz panel so i'm probably going to cap myself to 60 fps which is fine maybe one day when i upgrade the tv um you know i can enjoy those higher refresh rates uh, but until then very very happy to to have it i think probably you know if i'm being completely honest i'm going to stick with my nvidia frame generation technology because you know it, it is better visually i think it's fair to say uh, and i don't have a problem with it but if I was running a 3080 Ti, 3070, 3090, maybe even a 2080 Ti, maybe even, a, I don't know, a 6800 XT or, or, or whatever, for £5 to get you uh, a really nice frame generation solution for Flight Simulator, yeah, I mean, that's uh, almost no-brainer territory. Very, very impressive stuff. Anyway, folks, leave me a comment. Let me know um, if you've experienced it, if you've got any comments or thoughts. Love to hear from you. I hope you found this video useful. Leaving it a like will help a ton. And I'm going to have to stop talking now because my voice is literally about to give out on me. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I will speak to you in the next video. Until next time, happy flying.